Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the Executive Member for Transport Decision Session, 21st of February, 2023. Um, I'm Councillor Andy Dagorn, and I think it would probably be helpful if I can go around just so that everyone knows who's around the table, as it were, here to advise. Do you want, Margot, do you want to start? I won't try and pronounce it. Hi, I'm Margot Bedrevicu. I'm the Democracy Officer for the meeting. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm James Gilchrist, I'm the Director for Environment, Transport and Planning. Dave Atkinson, Head of Highways and Transport. Peter Marsland, Traffic Projects Officer. John Hunter, North Yorkshire Police Traffic Management. Darren Hobson, Traffic Management Team Leader. Thank you. Um, so the process... Um, is first off, I have to make any declarations of interests in relation to the agenda today. I have none, so you can record. I have no declarations of interest to make other than those that are on my record. Um, secondly, uh, the minutes of the meeting on 17th of January 2023. Um, I have no corrections in those, so I'm happy to sign those as a true record. Um, there is one reference in here to um, receipt of petitions, which um, will be on a, an agenda for later in the year. So I think that's down for um, March, the um, items which were referred to there as acknowledgements of petition. It does say later in the year, and I'm hoping that those can be um, considered in March. So I'm happy to. Oops, go the wrong way. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> and so then the next item on the agenda is public participation. And uh, today I have a number of people who've registered to speak either on items that are on the agenda or um, issues within the remit of the Executive Member of Transport. Um, have nobody ringing in, so all those people who are speaking are in the room. So if I can take them in the order I've got on my uh, sheet of registration. And the first speaker I have is Mr. Andy Hagon. Yeah, yeah. Hagen, sorry. sorry. I get Dagon and Dagon and all sorts. So. <laughs> So when, when you're ready, if you start and you've got three minutes to make your points. Okay, yeah. okay so I'm uh, Andy Hagen. Um, I'm with the local Labour team up in Rawcliffe and Clifton Without. I'm a parish councillor as well. Um, so it's about the reduction to 30 miles an hour on Shifton Road. Um, we decided to go out and do some door knocking. We door knocked on about 350 doors. We had about almost 100 responses from, uh, from residents. Um, so the area affected, Shipton Road, uh, North Home, South Home Drive, uh, Surrey Way, Malton Way. So lots of the roads um, that sort of surround Shipton Road. What did we find out? We found out that 46% uh, of residents said, yes, they would like the reduction. 26% uh, said, no, we don't. And 29% said, we weren't necessarily bothered either way. So uh, the people who said, let's keep it at 40, what did they say? Um, they were saying, you know, what data supports the reduction? We don't think it's an accident hotspot, so why does it need to be reduced? Um, consequently, why are we going to waste some money doing something when there doesn't seem to be a problem? Other residents said it's a wide road, so why shouldn't it be 40? Um, the sort of themes that came through from um, residents who wanted it to be reduced, a lot of it was around safety. So people were saying, well, it's safer for pedestrians, um, and for cyclists, and really as a, as a city, we should be encouraging this. Um, it's, it would be easy to exit uh, onto Shipton Road, either from your drive, if you live on Shipton Road, or from some of the side streets. Um, people tend to go quite fast on there, over 40 mile an hour, so by bringing it down to 30, hopefully that will reduce the average speed um, that, that we're seeing on Shipton Road. People who lived on Shipton Road, quite a few mentioned that there's a lot of noise, particularly from Arctic's going quite fast. So reducing the speed would reduce that. Um, it is a residential area. So then it should be 30 miles an hour. 
And finally, 40 miles an hour is too fast. It's very difficult to actually cross Shipton Road. So we need to help uh, people to cross the road. You know, there's not a lot of access or crossings on that particular road. So making it 30 would make it easier. Um, <clears throat> so overall, um, th there was a couple of other points. People said, why doesn't it go right up to the ring road? Um, who will police the 30 mile an hour? So if it does actually go down to 30 mile an hour, who will police it? Who will make sure that, that, that motorists are keeping to it? And whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever the decision that's made, the signage isn't very good on Shipton Road. So regardless of what you do, the, 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 the signage needs to be improved. Overall, we would support a reduction to the speed limit. I guess the question um, that we would have is, after the 18 months, you know, what would the live data need to say for you to say it's going to be 30? And what would the live data need to say for you to say it's 40? You know, what you're going to do with this live data that you accumulate over 18 months? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, consider that when we come to that item. Um, so the second speaker I have is uh, Jonathan Lavarak, um, who is speaking, I believe, on uh, issues around wade limits and Elvington. You have three minutes. Uh, morning. Uh, thank you for giving me the time to speak today. My name is Jonathan Lavera. I'm the chair of Elvington Parish Council. Uh, I know Christian Vassi is our ward council. will be speaking to you later. I understand that Sutton upon Derwent Parish Council have uh, put a statement into the committee as well. Will be read out later, I believe. I was born in Elvington, uh, and after living away for 20 years, returned approximately 10 years ago. In that time, the amount uh, and speed of traffic has increased exponentially. It has been. It is now the number one uh, complaint with residents, the speed of vehicles and the amount of HGVs traveling through the village. I and many others can literally feel the lorries going through it at four o'clock in the morning. Um, the B1228, uh, which starts at Grimston Bar and ends at the M62 is now used as a general cut through by HGVs while accessing the, uh, the motorway. Uh, the roads through the village were just simply not designed to take these type and size of vehicles. In fact, one of your own highways engineers recently stated in a response to an email from Councillor Vassi that the B1228 was not designed for the heavy traffic it now receives. Before we do any resurfacing works, it is vitally important that we improve the drainage issues first. This is a reference to the near constant works Yorkshire Water are undertaking on the road to maintain the water and drainage systems through the village. Due to the width of the carriageways and the road layout at certain pinch points, we witnessed di nearly daily incidents where HGVs are having to mount curbs and verges to pass each other, causing concerns for pedestrians and cyclists alike. A traffic survey was undertaken in December 2018 by the then Ward Councillor. On the back of the data produced, the implementation of a weight restriction was considered by this committee on the 24th of October 2019, at which stage it was added to the waiting list. The traffic has become noticeably worse since, and we are still awaiting any action. At the very least, we would like the committee to implement a seven and a half ton weight limit to Elvington by the adoption of an experimental traffic regulation order to restrict HGVs passing through the village. It has been proven that the implementation of this will have no real adverse effect on traffic, as when nearby Hag Bridge was closed for nearly 12 months, all through traffic was effectively stopped through the villages and the A1079 and other A roads didn't noticeably suffer. The other benefit to this order would be to protect the Grade 2 listed Sutton Bridge, which seconds. has been damaged on numerous occasions by HGVs passing over, and the closure of which, if damaged again, would most definitely have an adverse effect on the A1079. We appreciate that an enforcement of such restrictions is never easy, but it would certainly be a step in the right direction and provide some much needed peace and quiet through the villages. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, I will consider that under urgent business at the end of the agenda that we have uh, published today. Thank, Thank you very much. Comments. Next speaker I have is Lawrence Gunson um, in reference to the Neighbourn speed limit on our agenda. Okay, you have three minutes. 
Good morning. Thank you for the chance to talk. Uh, my name is Laurie Gunson. and I'm the chairman of Naaman Parish Council. I'm here representing not only the Parish Council, but we believe most of the residents based on recent feedback on the Village Facebook site. We strongly support your office's recommendation for the 30 mile an hour limit um, and much prefer that over the police recommendation of 40 miles an hour. Uh, we've been campaigning for the 30 miles an hour for many years. The main reasons are on safety. The first thing is, for those familiar with the area, there is a long stretch of high-speed road past the water treatment factory, and then you hit a severe dip under the old railway bridge, sometimes a standing water sitting there if, if the pump has got clogged with leaves. Uh, tra traffic at that point is often traveling at an excess of 50 miles an hour. There is then an exit from about five residential properties. The sight lines are very poor. That's quite dangerous driving out of there. You then continue around a bend and then you hit the marina, the York Marina. The cafe now is incredibly popular. Um, most days the car park is full to capacity and they are presently building a restaurant extension, which will increase the traffic even more so. In addition, they have a caravan site. So there are caravans moving in and out of the site and occasionally boats on low loaders. Uh, people who are not familiar with that area going to the cafe often have to break quite sharply um, and it's inevitably going to cause an accident. We have had two serious road traffic accidents on that stretch in the last several years and sadly two deer have also been killed on that stretch. The final concern is for pedestrians and cyclists. Cyclists can leave the Sustran cycle track at that point but there is no uh, continuing cycle track. They have to join the road where it's narrow and very high speed. Uh, and for pedestrians, it's the main route from the village through to the Sustrans cycle track to Bishopsorf and Fulford. Uh, and again, although there is a pavement, it's quite unnerving walking, particularly with children, on a stretch where traffic is, is going at 50 miles an hour plus. So all in all, uh, we have a lot of safety concerns and we fully support the move to 30 miles an hour. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, which we'll consider when we get to that item. <clears throat> the next speaker I have is uh, Gwen Swinburne on the remit of a committee and governance matters. Morning, Gwen. Uh, thank you, Lee. Um, three governance issues today, all tedious, I'm afraid. Um, first of all, thank you for addressing the long-standing park parking abuse on West Esplanade. May I ask that the large mud bath triangular area left remaining be considered for a pocket park. Next. The rather discreet traffic consultations of late are neither fair nor fit for purpose, Coppergate being particularly egregious. The non-parished inner wards, as a matter of course, are disadvantaged as they do not have a parish or town council as consultee to fight their corner, an ongoing unaddressed democratic deficit. I raise this today as I note that residents of Government House Road, recently adopted under delegations by Mr Ferris and subject to a validated external accounts objection, have asked for a res park. This cul-de-sac is right next to the river and sometimes a few cars park up there to enjoy the river when the six spaces by the river are full. This has been done for years when it was a private road and since its recent adoption. I raise this as an alert to make sure res park is being used for the intentions meant and also for you to make sure staff are more sound regarding their light touch consultation protocols. My recommendation is not just for you, is that whenever officers propose consultation, you should require a standard pro forma with purpose, questions, which specific consultees are to be invited, an EIA, mode of consultation, and report back timescales. May I ask that you and exec review the aims of Res Park and publish a clear policy, process, and gateway criteria as the problem definition is opaque or even absent. We really need these in place so citizens can have confidence that the system isn't being played or abused by residents, staff or members. After all, it's a nice money earner too. Finally, and this is very important, your senior management make decisions from time to time that they record, rather randomly it seems, as officer decisions. 
these staff fail every time to record which delegation they are relying upon from the constitution or your delegate or your directed delegation. This is amongst a number of administrative issues that is getting them into hot water. This needs regularizing in all the officer decision recording. I'll write to you, Andy, um, on the detail of that and the monitoring officer. Thank you very much for your comments, um, which we will take into account. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the next um, speaker I have is Andrew Mortimer on the remit of committee. And this is specifically relating to a road surfacing issue, I believe. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of questions really relating to Hull Road that were prompted by the report that went to exec last week, uh, which kind of had buried away in it that the resurfacing of Hull Road that was planned for this financial year has been put off till next financial year. Uh, the report failed to mention it had already been put off from the previous financial year, so that's like a two-year delay now. And I guess my question relates to, um, is the um, plan to use a surface dressing treatment still appropriate, given that the road condition has deteriorated in the two years since the original decision was taken uh, to use this option? It also brings me on to the second question, which relates to the remaining stretch of Hull Road from the Black Bull down towards Lawrence Street. Um, having cycled here today, um, I can certainly confirm that there's some really, really bad patches there and you have to grip onto the bike for dear life. Uh, and a number of people have come off in, in recent months and years. And I just wondered what the council's plans were to deal with that because it's getting worse and worse. Thank you. Okay, well, no, we don't have that on the agenda today, but I'll try and get uh, an answer for you on those specific points, certainly. Last time I went down Hull Road on a on a bike, it was not not particularly uh, helpful. So yeah, we do need to address that. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker I have is uh, Councillor Widdison regarding a petition from residents of Woodthorpe and Foxwood. Thank you, Andy. I always like doing this. Papers in our hand. Okay, so we've got over 800 residents have signed the petition. There were another 200, but we didn't get their postcodes, so we can't have actually say it's a thousand. The petition is We, the undersigned, back the campaign to retain a bus service for communities currently served by the number 12 and call for the government help needed to ensure the service's long term viability. So, the reason I'm here is to present this petition backing the retention of the number 12. Most of the six signatories are residents in Foxwood, Woodthorpe and Dring houses, for many of whom the number 12 is a real lifeline and they actually do not have an alternative because the number four is too far away for them to use. When it was first announced in December that it was being withdrawn, the community quickly came together and there was a well attended meeting organised by the councillors on December the 18th. It was a very positive discussion in which residents were able to say why the service mattered to them and what they would like to see in the future. An example being the return of a Sunday service. You know, people don't all go to church on a Sunday and they would like to travel in and out of town. All of this feedback has been shared with the council officers for them to use with the operators, which I know is happening and we're really grateful for that. It was good that Transdev were able to take on the number 12 route on a short term tender last month, but this was with significant financial support from the council and we very much hope that a longer term contract can be put in place to provide certainty for residents about the future of their bus service. The reduction in frequency from half hour to hourly is disappointing and residents and councillors want the services to be a success. So hopefully that frequency can be increased soon. We want to work together with council officers and bus operators to make the service an attractive option for as many people as possible. For example, a simple one, exploring ways in which the children attending All Saints can get there on time, not three quarters of an hour early or 20 minutes late, which is how the current bus timetable is operating. The further extension of the government financial support for the bus industry until the end of June is welcome, although it does seem that once again, the pushback of the funding is to another cliff edge. Bus operators, residents, and everyone at 
with an interest in public transport needs to continue to press the government to work on a long-term solution to provide certainty rather than simple short-term fixes. Andy, what do you want me to do with the petition? Thank, um, if you want to, you want to interrupt democracy officer, we'll make sure that it gets to the, go through the channels. So thank, <coughs> thank you very much for those comments and um, I've no doubt we'll be returning to discuss those in the, the next month or so. Um, uh, I believe the, uh, there is an item for the executive in March that on the issue of, of bus services for the city. Um, so then I think my last speaker I've got on this list is Rachel Shilito. Did I, oh, sorry. Okay. I've, I've missed, missed one speaker, so I'll come back to Councillor Vassie, but yes. Yeah. when you're ready. Good morning. Um, I'm Rachel Shiloto. I'm the secretary of York City Rowing Club and I'm here on behalf of the club to talk about our concerns and some of our questions regarding the restrictions at West um, Esplanade. So as a community club I'm sure you'll agree um, that we're significant users of the area. We'd really very much like our um, thoughts and considerations, sorry, thoughts and concerns to be taken into account when uh, considering these proposed restrictions. So we are keen to see the option for people to drive from Lendl down, down to the Esplanade access um, to access the Triangle of Lang land for parking removed. But we feel actually the restrictions alone will not be enough to address this based on the current lack of compliance um, and the current uh, lack of enforcement of the restrictions as they stand. The current arrangements, so no parking between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. are adequate provided they're enforced. It seems to us that the lack of enforcement is the issue. And in sum, we can't see how the proposed change in restrictions will make any difference if they're not enforced, as there is currently little compliance in terms of parking on this patch of land. We're also quite concerned about how such proposals will affect the running of our club. Enhanced restrictions downstream of the old gate will ha have a hugely significant effect on our events that we run five times a year, um, such as one that's happening uh, this Saturday. Um, as well as other activities, such as the unloading and loading of boats onto our trailers before events. So, for example, in a fortnight's time, when we're going down to the Thames, we're going to be loading and unloading um, large eights onto the trailer. And we'd normally leave that trailer and truck there, um, sometimes overnight before the long journey down. Um, and obviously, these are normally done outside of the 8 till 6 p.m. Uh, restrictions. For our events that we run five times a year, we park boat trailers um, on the road above the old white gate. Uh, would we be able to have an agreement whereby we could can do this or would we need to apply for a formal suspension on each occasion? We really can't stress enough how important it is for the club to have use of the Esplanade for, this, for these events. It would have a monumental effect on the club and the broader rowing community if we weren't able to have such events as they are a key income generator for the club, um, and, as well as providing uh, an important event for rowers within and beyond the Yorkshire region. We do actually propose another solution. We would support the introduction of the new restrictions upstream of the old white gate. We note that cars um, are parking on the triangle of grass adjacent to the car park, and we would support measures to prevent this. The parking is causing damage to this patch of land, and we would agree it is a nuisance. Ironically, we don't actually believe that the current proposal will do anything to change that. As such, we would, we would fully support measures to prevent cars traveling above the old um, gate, but note that any such measures, such as a bollard, for example, would need to be removable to allow access to York City Rowing Club when the Lendl Bridge floodgates are closed. Um, and such bollards are already used to allow access uh, through the Esplanade car park and are indeed effective. Thank you. Before you leave, can I just check if there's any any clarification that officers want to make about some of the points that you've made? Because obviously we, we can't have a discussion when we get to that item, but just if, if there's anything that you need to know from the speaker. Um, you may have already had some correspondence, but I'm just giving that opportunity if there's anything that Thank you. you think needs to be clarified. Um, just with regards to the unloading of the boats, yeah. does the vehicle move away or is it, is it just the trailer left? 
sorry, is it just the... Does the vehicle pull away? Is it just the trailer that's left? Because the trailer wouldn't be subject to the restriction. Okay. So it it, just so be... the vehicle is attached to it, yeah. then it would be subject to the restriction potential for PCN. Okay. But the vehicle's not there. So if you had the trailer left overnight, it wouldn't be issued a ticket. Okay, that's helpful to know. So a trailer loaded with the boats yeah. on the Esplanade would be fine. Yeah. It's provided that the truck is detached and perhaps in the car yeah. park. Okay. Okay. Right. I think uh, that'd be fine. Yeah. That's helpful. At least we've answered one question. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else from anyone? No. Okay. Thanks okay. very much for your time. Um, so then, uh, as a yeah, apologise for missing out. Councillor Vassi was on my list and I skipped over that. <laughs> He's very patiently waiting. Thank you, Chair. When the possibility of introducing secondary double glazing on the mansion house to reduce heating bills and carbon emissions is raised in York, conservation officers immediately object on the grounds that just changing the reflections in the windows seen from the street would ruin the building and be a heritage disaster. But when attempts are made to protect a beautiful 17th century grade two listed bridge between the villages of Alvington and Sutton upon uh, on Derwent are advanced, the council declines to support them. HGVs longer than the bridge itself thunder over it day in, day out. The wide and heavy vehicles regularly scrape and gouge the stonework of the bridge. In January 2010, an HGV smacked the bridge so hard and caused such extensive damage that it had to be closed for months and £350,000 were spent repairing the structure. But apparently the reflections in windows in the mansion house are more important to this city than a grade two historic bridge. Well, now a different issue has arisen, calling into question the council's approach. Earlier this month, the bridge was closed at short notice, causing traffic chaos. You've heard about it from um, uh, Jonathan earlier as, as the chair of Elwinton Parish Council. Water pipes beneath the road on the approach to the bridge are failing, and Yorkshire Water are conducting a series of emergency repairs. They've expressed the view that the problem is likely down to the weight of the vehicles passing over the road. It's a narrow road with steep banking, a weak road over fields that flood regularly. To protect the bridge and to preserve access to the villages, to enable children to get to school and village life to continue, I urge you as executive member to consider instructing officers to draw up plans for an experimental traffic regulation order to impose a 7.5 tonne weight restriction to prevent damage to the bridge and the highway by banning unsuitable vehicles, while engineers look more closely at the condition of the bridge and the approach road. An ETRO to impose weight restrictions uh, has been used uh, at other local authorities, including in Oxfordshire, Gloucestershire and Bristol. We surely cannot risk the road and the utilities beneath it collapsing. The economic and educational cost of further emergency closures or further unnecessary risk to this grade two listed bridge. A temporary 18 month ETRO would give time to properly evaluate the best way forwards and at the same time demonstrate how a traffic restriction will operate if imposed permanently. Thank you uh, for listening. Uh, on behalf of residents, can you please keep the council, the parish council, and myself informed as to what you decide? And lastly, I support uh, Nabon Parish Council's comments regarding the speed restriction. Thank, thank you. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contributions. So uh, that concludes the public speakers. So I can now move on to the actual agen agenda. Um, and the first item on the agenda is speed limit traffic regulations, uh, page seven onwards. So are you going to introduce this item? Yeah, I'll do a very short introduction and hand over to people who understand the information better than I do. So um, government guidance is to keep speed limits under review. Um, and the DFT uh, produce a, a couple of guidance documents on that and they're very clear that we should do that in consultation with the police. 
Um, the police comments are contained within the report and uh, the police are represented here today so that we can uh, articulate those comments in more detail and explore uh, the recommendations. As a traffic authority, we're responsible for making the decisions on setting the speed limits, but as I say, we do that as per the guidance in consultation with the police, but the decision is ours. Government have also uh, asked traffic authorities to consider the introduction of lower speed limits, and particularly 20 mile an hour in urban areas and built up village streets and where cycling and walking are being promoted. Um, I'll ask Peter to go uh, add anything generic to the report. And then what I suggest we do is we go through location by location and hear from the police and from Peter on his assessment. Uh, and then you can sort of consider that and, and make a decision. So okay, obviously. thank you. And, and obviously just perhaps worth repeating the fact that um, the reason we're considering this today as opposed to last month is that we did have late representations from the police um, when I was about to consider this a month ago um, and I felt it important that we had officers had the opportunity and I had the opportunity to hear their perspective before a decision is made on on the proposals so uh, do you want to make any general comments to that Darren? that's Peter sorry <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Um, you can see the range and the uh, slight alterations to the previous submission to yourself uh, in that uh, the in paragraph three of the uh, report, we have several recommendations for a permanent traffic order. And in paragraph four, three recommendations for experimental traffic regulation order. Mm -hmm. uh, John Hunter from North Yorkshire Police is here with us today to offer the police perspective, uh, bearing in mind uh, comments and representations made about enforcement support and education support in relation to the imposition of revised speed limits in these areas. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, you'd like to move forwards. Just before Sorry. we do that, um, uh, James, uh, I, I was just going to say, I think what we need to be clear about is particularly where there are experimental traffic regulation orders, it may be necessary to consider uh, additional measures to make sure we get compliance. It's not just an enforcement led yes. approach. So if you were to decide today something that then wasn't, the speed limit didn't work mm -hmm. and that it wasn't observed by 85% or whatever the, the guidance is, mm -hmm. then we might need to consider coming back to you to say we need some engineering measures to make sure we get compliance here. Okay, so so I think as a general um, comment before we start, I, I would certainly acknowledge that all of these proposals arise from local concerns about inappropriate speed for maybe within the speed limit or or um, you know, it, it far in excess of speed limit, but they all arise from local concerns, whether residents or ward councillors. And as a council, we do need to balance road safety concerns that have led to these proposals against the likelihood of effective speed reduction um, from the proposals being implemented. And I do also want to I'll put on record, we recognise limited police resources for enforcement activity um, but as we have a road safety partnership with the police and the other emergency services, it is important that we work together um, to educate uh, as well as enforce uh, any changes to the road environment and reinforce the behaviour that the res is behind the, the reasons why so many residents have, have written in. And as you've heard from the public speakers, you know, opinions gathered um, as to uh, the benefits of individual uh, proposals. Um, so I think if I've got this right, there's uh, the, the reference in the road safety partnership is using all the E's, education, engineering and enforcement um, as, a, as a means to uh, achieve behaviour change and improve the safety, which is ultimately what this is about, um, particularly for vulnerable road users. So, um, would, um, John, do you want to make any general, general comments at this point? Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, the, um, basically the, the police, like the rest of us, are uh, predominantly interested in road safety. Um, there, there is a 
a widespread misunderstanding of how speed limits work. Uh, we would all like lower speeds and we would, um, we would always support a reduction in the speed limit as long as it was, um, as long as traffic, existing traffic speeds were commensurate with that limit. What we don't want is a reduction in the speed limit that will fail. Um, so in order to agree to a speed limit, the, the speeds, the, the speed data would have to be um, pretty much the, at the proposed limit, or there would have to be a proposal for engineering measures to bring the speeds down to that speed limit. Um, it's not a matter of introducing a speed limit. Speed limits, unfortunately, do not work or don't tend to work on their own. So merely reducing the speed limit does not actually reduce the speed of traffic. Um, and in some cases can actually increase the speed of traffic. Uh, so that, that's, that's where we're coming from. Um, we will support any speed limit that will work. Uh, that, that's not an issue. We stick to the DFT guidelines because we have to be fair and consistent uh, across the, the county and the city of York. Um, I cover the whole of, of North Yorkshire and the city of York. Um, and we do deal with an awful lot of applications for speed limit changes. Right, thank you for that for that observation. So that's just the general context for what, what we're talking about. So I think if we could work our way through the individual proposals, um, Peter, if you can lead us on each one. Uh, and certainly I have read all of the reports and the, the comments from residents and um, if, if any one of you have actually taken the time to read through all of these comments, you'll see that there's quite uh, a Marmite a sort of approach to this, that, you know, we're not going to please everyone, but it's a case of, of, of trying to take an uh, objective approach to it. So do you want to? Very good. If um, we, would, we uh, could start at Annex C mm -hmm. on the details of the proposals, and the first one is the holly stocked on the forest. Um, it wasn't appropriate to gather any speed data for the nature of this one and uh, there was one response in favour as you can see from the reports none against um, and it just extends the existing 20 mile an hour on the main street into the uh, small estate of uh, 10 houses or so uh, no objections from any parties at all i think and the police comment said no issues so, um i think I'll, I'll, this is Clearly, a, a fairly straightforward one. Um, it's trying to address a somewhat nonsensical situation at the moment with a, a new estate that is outside of a twenty mile an hour on the main main road. So, you know, from a point of view of uh, removing signage clutter and consistency, it, it certainly mean, make, seems to me to make sense to approve the. Uh, the proposed change. I'm happy with, with, with that one. And we have the next one is uh, well, this one's a bit more problematic, isn't it? Dun Dunnington. Um, A1079 at Dunnington. Yes. Yeah. And I must confess, I was trying to, I think it was an annex um, which has been supplied of a map. Because in some of the comments, there's reference to points. Um, yeah, 1079 here. There's reference to points C and D, which are not on the plan in the papers. So there is now a supplement, which hopefully you may be able to explain. I would have included that, Councillor. However, um, the overall approach of Dunnington Parish Council and Kexby and Scorby Parish Council is to have a 40 limit from Kexby Bridge all the way through to Grimston Bar Roundabout. It's not a feasible proposition in our view. Um, the road is not of the nature uh, that falls within the DFT guidelines to reduce the speed limit uh, even to 40 miles an hour. Um, it's uh, in the main. This proposal that's before you today um, was formulated some time ago. Um, and it's just an extension of the existing 40 limit to the west of Dunnington to provide what uh, is somewhat termed a, a buffer zone to allow speed to reduce to 40 miles an hour as it reaches um, the urban area, uh, beginning with the houses to the north of the A1079. Um, so from, from just for my benefit, 
there's on this plan there's points a and b is point a the existing limit limit and point, point b is the proposed limit indeed okay so so we're literally talking about well 30 or 50 yards are we 100, 100 meters i believe hmm? 100 meters 100 meters yeah. okay um I, I personally can't, I don't know if, if the police have any particular views. I mean, the proposal you've got is an experimental traffic order, is it? For Indeed, this? 18 months in uh, terms of time. Okay. And presumably the, the parish, from what you said, the parish councils want even further extension. In that period of time, can we monitor beyond in the area which they are? Referring to to be, Re be included. Sorry, uh, Councillor. Realistically, the extent that they're looking for from Caxby Bridge mm -hmm. all the way through to Grimston Bar is not a feasible proposition. Right. Um, the road doesn't lend itself to lower speeds. It's wide mm -hmm. open. The the views and visibility is excellent. Um, mm. And okay. in the main, with the levels of traffic, uh, whilst the traffic speeds would be at peak times, around about 40 hours an hour, that's just because of volume of traffic. If we put in a limit to inhibit traffic outside of those peak times, um, you wouldn't see any compliance whatsoever, I don't believe. Okay. So I'm, I'm happy Council to go on. I think it might just be worth understanding what the police is concerned okay. with this. So we're recommending an experimental traffic order because the police aren't in support of this one. So it might just be worth understanding. Uh, yeah. Um, our, our view was that the existing 40 miles per hour speed limit works mm -hmm. well. The DFT guidelines say that you shouldn't have a 40 as a, a buffer, um, that it's, it's either a speed limit or it's not, except in exceptional circumstances. And I was concerned about the, um, the visibility of the change in environment from the proposed new limit. Uh, the, mm -hmm. a, a driver adapts their speed to the changing environment. And whilst the change in environment is, is clear from the existing terminal signs, I didn't think it was clear from, uh, from the proposed uh, location of the terminal sign. If that clarifies anything. Thank you. Um, and so just looking at, at this, I know you said about a buffer, but the existing limit is, is 40 for significant length beyond there, isn't it? Just, just trying to understand from on here, we're talking about extending a 40 mile an hour with a 40 mile an hour. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so on, you know, on, on that basis, um, I am happy to go with the officer recommendation to implement this as a trial, but I would certainly ask that we could, if the parish council are still, um, you know, pushing for further extensions, we need to have some speed data before it comes back for a decision on the, the ETRO, whether or not it's, it's permanent. We would need to understand if they're going to be pushing for changes to, to the environment beyond what we've got in here. And there would need to be some speed data to make some decisions on that, I think, and, and to be able to respond to the Parish Council. I appreciate that that all involves somebody putting a box up for a week and then analysing the data, but I think it'd be worth doing probably. It may well support the point you just made. My concern would be, and I feel of others as well, is um, as John mentioned about the change in environment, mm -hmm. beyond the um, confines of Dunnington Village and further down the road at Kexby, uh, the road just isn't suitable to impose uh, an all day limit as you'd have to do, you know, 24 mm -hmm. hours okay. all year round. Um, the context of the road and its surrounding just wouldn't support that. Okay. Um, and at the moment, with the traffic peaks, as certain people that travel will know, <laughs> yes. um, you know, you couldn't even do 30 miles an hour, let alone 40. So I don't okay. feel it's realistic to spend time in looking at traffic speeds when, okay. you know, it's plain for all those that use the road. Mm -hmm. and are familiar with it and live by it, they know what it's all about. Well, I'll, I'll leave that one to the Parish Council. Just quickly, just um, to answer your question, we'll raise with our road safety team see if there's any alternative 
uh, suitable locations to put any speed servers in. Okay. But as Peter says, it's likely that it's not going to give the information. But we can look and at just locations. Just if you might end the debate, if you can provide some that. Potentially, yeah. Everybody's um, at so we'll, we'll anyway. speak to them and look at yeah. if there's any potential locations. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm approving that one as, as the per the officer recommendation. So the next one I have is... Um, Northfield Lane of Poppleton. Northfield Lane of Poppleton. Can you tell me what page we're on? Just to... See. Yeah, sure. Two pages, yeah. Okay. So do you want to explain this one to me? Indeed, sir. It's um, a, what we uh, have previously termed a quiet lane, which isn't quiet whatsoever. Um, I've worked at Paver's Shoes in the not-too-distant past, and at certain times of day, the road is quite busy with HGV traffic, um, cars, uh, and every, everything else that goes on in an industrial context and uh, such like. Um, the road in its context is a rural road. It, uh, in my view, uh, it wouldn't support a 30 miles an hour limit, even though the 85th percentile speed uh, northbound are commensurate with such a limit, uh, southbound, not so. Um, it's a very open road. No, there's only one, one, prop, one residential property on it and then a couple of other small businesses between the industrial estates and the park and ride site. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we would achieve much compliance, uh, but you would certainly achieve, uh, receive a lot of complaints about people speeding. Um, just appreciating to... that at the southern end of the road there is the cycle track facility i'm in my experience and the amount of times i've taken our new vehicle down to be charged at Poppleton park and ride charging site um, is that there's very little cycle and pedestrian traffic using the road um, to um, justify spending a significant amount of money um, on introducing uh, a reduced limit um what would you i i would agree the um the, the speeds are as, as low as could be expected anyway um and we were support a 40 limit but um to be perfectly blunt i don't see the point in wasting the money on signs and the, and infrastructure when the speeds are sub 40 anyway so I can just clarify that at the moment there's 40 mile an hour limit near the park and ride site. Is that the situation? Um, it is. Yeah. Um, and this is proposing to extend the 40 mile an hour. Is that, is that what we're talking about? Uh, the proposal is for a 30 mile an hour limit. Right. So that is, is what's been advertised, is it? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, and this... And am I right in thinking that this, this road only leads to the industrial estate, or is it a through route? Uh, there are some residences at the southern end as well. Uh, I think it's four, um, but there's two industrial complexes. Right. Um, but there isn't access onto the, um, the ring road? So none whatsoever, yeah. apart from for cycles and pedestrians. Okay. Um, So the, the question is whether or not um, the 40 the 40 at the top end um, of the road nearest to the A59, um, whether it's reasonable then to step that down to 30 is what we're basically proposing, isn't it? Um, and we don't seem to have had that much response to the advert. Um, so given what's been said about uh, vulnerable road users and the reference in particular to the cycling and walking path that's been introduced, um, it's, it seemed to me uh, appropriate to reduce this to 230 miles an hour. Um, um, given the mean speeds are, on, the data we've got suggests that 
Um, it's only in the southbound where the 85th percentile is, is outside of the, 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 the limit, the well, world southbound, and the, the, the mean is quite, is relatively close. So I think a 30 mile an hour would actually um, benefit um, residents and users in, in, and in actually encourage sustainable travel to the industrial estate, which is obviously a key thing that we want to try and achieve. So I'm happy to approve that um, as advertised. We move on to the North Lane Huntington. This one is section, fairly short section, we turn off the main road, I believe, isn't it? The built up section that we're referring to. It is, Councillor. Um, and I have had, should say, had some representation from the ward councillors welcoming this, um, and requesting some specific things to do with signing the 30 mile an hour at the village end be moved towards the ring road and 30 mile an hour sign be moved towards Moulton Road. I don't know if, if um, that is within what's advertised. Obviously, we can't change the, the I, boundary of what's been advertised. If I could just explain, those two requests I have been dealt with separately and they're subject to a further uh, decision session. Oh, I see. Yours okay, so I'll leave those future. out of the so conversation. Leave those to one side, Thank please. You, that's, that's helpful. You. So do you want Sorry. to just explain a little bit about this one? Yeah, there's a very short section, as you've described, Councillor, uh, very few properties, but uh, those that are there have limited uh, views on access to North Lane to Huntington. And whilst it is a short section and doesn't really fit into the 600 metre requirement for um, the distance for us reduction in speed limit, it's felt that because of the nature of the bend uh, to the west of the A64 junction um, and the location of some of the driveways that it would be safer to reduce the speed limit here to 30 or perhaps 40 miles an hour. My personal view uh, from a professional perspective is that um, to reduce from 60 on the A64 turning in, which is... Um, there's a fair amount of traffic does that to reach uh, Monk's Cross, mm -hmm. um, is, is too big a jump, bearing in mind that traffic turning in um, will be concentrating on the turn rather than looking for speed limit signs as a, at any junction, and so you would want to push it in. Unfortunately, just as you turn in within about 20 yards, there is access to a small industrial uh, uh, area business area mm -hmm. um and so but having said that traffic wouldn't be at very high speed by that point in any case um the remainder of the road to the west from the proposed uh, limit points uh, has been resurfaced and traffic can travel quite safely at the national speed limit appropriate to the vehicles mm -hmm. um but the main concern here is for the residents and their safety in coming in and out of their properties onto that section of road and there's it would be sensible to reduce the limit uh, whether to 30 or not um i'll put the ball in your court councillor okay and uh, the you say that the a64 is the main road which obviously is a is national speed limit as well indeed it is okay and and do you know what the length is i know we say it's not the 600 meters what roughly what the length no, but, um, ben Potts has provided the comment um uh that it's not 600 meters but it's not not far off and i feel that 450 i'm informed councillor um <laughs> And so that that would be, in terms of the, the sharp bend as you're approaching from the west, that that would be some fifty to hundred yards before the bend, would it? Is this what? At, at least, yes. Yeah. I mean, I think, given the the nature of the environment, 
that a 30 mile an hour would be more appropriate because you know it's it's maybe not people who are not familiar with the area will think they're coming into a village you know a small settlement of some sort which where, where we, we would expect a 30 mile an hour limit and if driving at 40 miles an hour is really inappropriate approaching a, a give way in a major junction with a an a road you don't really it, you know it wouldn't really make sense to give the impression that 40 is a sort of a reasonable speed to be driving at for in that short mm -hmm. uh, fairly congested environment so i mean i don't know if if you had any particular comments john on on this um because it says tbc on the comments that we got back the the reason tbc was just to confirm the speed data because I didn't know where the speed data had been taken from. Right. Um, we, no, we would support a 30, I think, as long as it was um, signed in such a way that it was visible uh, mm -hmm. from, so that, you, you know, as Peter pointed yes. out, as you, as you turn off the A64. I mean, I um, appreciate all these things. Yeah, cost, they're, they're all but... fine, fine tuning, really. But, um, mm -hmm. and the, if the 30 at the other end was positioned in such a way that the, uh, the developed area was visible from the terminal signs, that would probably help it to work uh, mm -hmm. but it, it is as peter pointed out it is short but i think the fact that it comes to an abrupt stop at the giveaway line um would probably uh, yeah. be sufficient to make and i think from looking at the the map i'm not particularly familiar with it in person but you've got a 90 degree turn on, on or off the yeah. a64 so it's not like there's a it's like a slip road but yeah, you know, where you'd expect people it's, to it's be a road I use anyhow. regularly, and um, personally, I don't think many people would travel much in excess of thirteen. I mean, on on, on that basis, I'm happy to approve the uh, thirty for this one. Then the next one, we've got Symbolk Lane, and I am familiar with this, having worked at the York, uh, York College for a number of years, and I have to confess, long thought it was overdue for a sensible speed limit so <laughs> do you want to explain it anyhow peter it's between the two distances um, i'm sorry my apologies um the current section under consideration over basically over the bridge from the just beyond the college down to the uh changing environment where the properties begin at the northern edge of bishop thorpe uh is currently the national speed limit and it runs between two 30 limits. Mm -hmm. um, the road is open, the views are good, mm -hmm. and but it's felt that with the uh, increase in, especially during the COVID era, with the amount of foot traffic and cycle traffic, uh, and perhaps the occasional horse and rider, that it would be more appropriate to keep the or reduce them, sorry, down to 40 miles per hour between the existing transition points rather than having a 60. Uh, the uh, mean and 85 percentile speeds are commensurate with that. Uh, there isn't any accident data that I'm aware of. We don't think that there have been any accidents there. Um, and that achieving a 40 mile an hour mm -hmm. uh, would be realistic. Okay. Well, I should should say I'm aware of at least one accident with a, a colleague coming out of the, the junction from the the college. That's in thirty miles an hour. And yes, already. So the, the the point is that they were flying over the bridge mm -hmm. at an inappropriate speed. They probably I don't know what the outcome of the the case was, but I imagine that you know, inappropriate speeds leading straight into a thirty from the sixty mile an hour limit. Um, you know, is a, is a problem, um, mm. particularly given that the street lights when the college was built were only extended literally up to that that junction. So it's mm -hmm. the thirty limit is more or less on the junction with the college. It is yes, um, which you know, given the amount of traffic that comes in and out of there on a daily basis, is a concern. So, John, do you want to? Yep, my concerns were purely the fact that it doesn't meet the DFT criteria and that there is already, um, as far as I'm aware, and I think I've cycled along it, a, a, a perfectly acceptable cycle and footway. Well, isn't it? Wrong. 
last time corrected it. <laughs> there is, uh, well, unless it's happened in, relatively no, I, recently, I, there is a footway which I thought would make sense as shared space given the low traffic. Okay. I have right. certainly had oh, colleagues I, say they wouldn't cycle, they live in Bishopsthorpe, they wouldn't I, cycle I, I there because the road's too I, dangerous. I, the objection so. was primarily on the fact that it doesn't meet the DFT criteria, but okay. so, Thank you. I, I personally don't have any strong feelings one way or the other. Okay. Um, well, I, I think that given the length that this covers and the fact that um, this is used, you know, as an alternative when there's congestion, people will choose to use it rather than tack after Cadastra Road, um, you know, which does tend to encourage inappropriate speeds. Um, I would support the officers and, and also looking at the um, 85th percentile, the actual speed data does suggest that current speeds are fairly close to uh, compliance with 45, 40 miles an hour limit. Um, the mean is, is actually below 40 already. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to support this and certainly would hope that it might help encourage more sustainable travel to your college, um, given the, you know, the, anecdotal information I have had from colleagues in the past about you know, the feelings of safety or otherwise on that, that road um, as to whether or not they would cycle, certainly they won't cycle in winter and might do it in the summer. Um, so I'm happy to approve that limit. So we move on then to Aspen Brian and there's two sites here which um, perhaps if you can explain these to me as well. I have read the report but it's it, it can get a bit Effectively, confusing. Effectively, the apologies, do in fact are three sites, but okay. um, two are sort of combined. Uh, the mm -hmm. first site is to the northeast of the village, mm -hmm. uh, the extension of the 30 mile an hour area to um, encourage reduction in speed prior to the built up area. Um, by 100 meters mm -hmm. uh, further out towards the A1237 roundabout. Um, so just to clarify the the data speed data is that at the it, on the furthest extent of the proposed limit or is it i wonder if darren might be able to uh, yeah, I, I wasn't here when the speed data was collected okay yeah, um, that, so that would be darren helpful can, to explain can, where the data comes from it's at the 60 mile an hour limit which is at the village boundary where it changes to 30. So that's that's what the speed is currently yeah. at the current boundary, right? Okay. And we're proposing a hundred meters extent. So obviously that that those speeds are inappropriate for the the limit. But the I suppose the the idea behind this is that um, people will maybe not be complying with the limit when they come in, but they're more likely to, to come down to 30 by the time they reach the speed, reach the village itself. Is that yeah, the, that was the, the idea of extending that, that it. We'd get further compliant further back and then more accessible speed to the village. Right. Um, the village are, have pushed before for a 20 mile an hour limit, but that was never taken forward. Okay. Um, so that's, that's that one. Do you want to have any, I mean, do you want to wait till we've gone through them all? Or? No, I'm, I'm uh, happy with that. Okay. Peter, do you want to say about Yes, that? indeed. Uh, then travelling through the village and leaving the village towards the uh, Agricultural College, um, the existing 30 transition point uh, to the national speed limit as it currently stands is just beside the entrance to a play, play park area. Right. Uh, and is at the... Um, residential area um, limit of the village, as it were. And the proposal is to move it out to the south by 100 metres to again provide some uh, degree of protection to pedestrians and people leaving their properties. Uh, generally speaking, the views are good, but the paths are quite narrow in that area. And um, a little extension of, of the 100 metres extension, is not little, but... Um, similar to the one to the north uh, northeast, um, seems reasonable in the circumstances. There is no uh, precise speed data for that area. Um, 
uh, one of the questions was quite a few was quite a few responses uh, to this, and there seemed to be some questions around the extent of the street lighting. Um, That's to the uh, third part uh, or the second part of site two, oh, okay. which is by the college. Right. And and is the proposal to include extend the limit to cover all of the area that's street lights? Because apparently that seemed to be some sort of inconsistency in the signing. Uh, no, currently, the, currently, there's no signing to indicate what is there. So the street lighting would indicate a 30 mile an hour limit, but there's no... And we're proposing there's no to, sign to say that to it's not and it's change it to, yeah. to actually address that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That that well that certainly seems to make a lot of sense to me. Um John, do you have any if I could just clarify, Councillor? Yeah. The extension of the 30 limit is only by hundred metres, beyond which we're proposing 40 miles an hour all right. the way up to the junction with the A64 and A1237. Okay. And that would then cure the anomaly of the street lighting and the 30 limit not being within the traffic order. Um, and it would clarify everything for everybody. The, um, the part between, sorry if I may, yeah. um, the part between the uh, junction of the A64 and the 1237 down to where the, we proposed the 30 to be extended to mm -hmm. is commensurate with um, a 40 mile an hour limit, uh, the mean and 85 percentile speeds that you can see to the bottom of the diagram indicate that compliance is uh, quite likely. Mm -hmm. And as uh, we've discussed many times, uh, it will clear up the situation once and for all for everybody. Um, John, do you want to have anything to add? Uh, certainly, uh, Councillor, we, we would support the, the 40. Um, it clarifies the position around the, the roundabout. My only concern is, um, and it's, it's not a, an issue really, is that I don't know exactly where the boundary is with national highways. Uh, it's right on the roundabout. They take, they only maintain the roundabout over the A64. So because the, so yeah, is there, is there, there, it also has courage with lights, I think. So you'd have yes. to. It would I mean, make sense to, yeah. do we need to liaise with them about whether the whole roundabout should be sign at the Point. There's a deregulation sign at the point. It's it's right at the junction, about maybe twenty meters back from the junction. Um, and what's on the other side of it? Then? That's that's uh, <laughs> national highways, and that's their speed limit. As I say, I'm not sure where the light the, the lights over the bridge is. That what you're saying? Yes, the lights over the bridge. The lights over the bridge. And, and the the junction to Cornwall. Yeah, um, I can't remember what the signs are on it. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I saw. Exactly I'm just. I'm speed, just yeah. yeah. Just trying but that's, to that's speculate national on highway. whether whether national highways would want having a view on <laughs> whether the whole of the roundabout should be forty or not. But you know we can decide that separately, I suppose. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, on the basis of what what you've said, I'm I'm happy to approve the the recommendations for these uh, changes that you've uh, as you've indicated them. Um, the only additional um, point to, to record would be um, just to liaise with national highways um, about the speed limit for the roundabout itself. I mean, obviously that's that's their decision, but just so they're aware that we're extending a 40 mile an hour limit up to that transition point. So, you know, from our point of view, we need to know where do we put a, a national speed limit, the restricted sign as you turn onto a roundabout, or is it um, you know, the 40 for the whole of the roundabout. Okay. Um, so the next one we've got is neighbour, and we've heard some representations about uh, this one with support from neighbour and parish council, um, which is to extend the 30 mile an hour. I think it's northwards on that plan, isn't it? To just beyond. If I remember rightly, that's just beyond the dip underneath the suspense, just it's around about this bridge, isn't 85 it? metres south of the, of the dip. Um, are you familiar with the location, Councillor? If it's where I think it is, no. but <laughs> it depends. You want to describe it? Um, uh, Travelling to the south from York or Fulford area, um, the road is fairly straight. You approach the bridge 
which is in has a significant dip and as described by the speaker it often floods mm -hmm. or has uh, standing water um, it's the access point to the Sustran cycle track and there's been a little bit of work done there to improve access for people there is no footways underneath so pedestrians do have to come onto the road uh, and cyclists besides um, it's the proposal is a protective measure for road safety, mm -hmm. um, appreciating that the travelling further south towards the uh, marina, we may not get compliance in that section. Um, but I think if we um, if we sign it in an appropriate way, we will see greater compliance. Mm -hmm. um, than is currently the case. Obviously, all the speeds um, that are shown uh, on, on the plan uh, are not commensurate with mm. implementing the proposal, sorry. Um, but the safety issues around this uh, suggest that we, we should take it, make every effort to protect those people that we're encouraging to uh, walk, cycle and uh, and ride horses and do whatever they do in active travel measures. Yes, I mean, certainly for public speaker did refer to the increasing intensification of activity uh, in the area with, you know, Marina Cafe, a caravan site and cyclists and, and so forth. So, you know, there is, is that factor to take into account as well. Um, John, do you want to comment? Thank you, Councillor. Um, the, the speed data collected is commensurate with the 40 limit. It's not commensurate with the 30 limit. Mm -hmm. um, it would obviously be ideal if the speed data was commensurate with the 30 limit, and that would provide a much safer environment for um, cyclists, pedestrians and, and equestrians. Um, we would support it if it was engineered in such a way that speeds were reduced to a 30. Mm -hmm. But I don't, uh, looking at the speed data, I, I don't see how merely putting 30 signs up is actually going to reduce the speed to the required level. Okay. Um, and there is a danger that um, there will be an expectation of lower speeds than, than are actually the case. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But, but if it could be engineered, then mm -hmm. that would be fine. There was some engineering works done at the... Village entrance uh, last May. Um, this extension was originally part proposed to go forward with that, but was missed off that to make sure they could get the works in in time. Right. Uh, so there has been some works in the area. I'm not sure. And the speed data was done prior to that works. Ah, right. That's right. That's going to be my next question. Um, so, so there's been some works, as you say, close to the point of a proposed. Transition within, is it within, that, within the area that's proposed? Sorry. Okay. Um, and one other question is: um, obviously, we've had representations from the parish council very much in support of this this change. Um, is it possible for us to uh, commit to work with the parish council, just looking at um, sort of whatever changes might be appropriate to? help reinforce the limit. I have in mind that, you know, most villages are quite keen on planters and, you know, various things that might change the, the environment, uh, welcome to neighbour and whatever it might be, um, could help to bring that about. And, and, and likewise, you know, the, the proprietors of the, the cafe, the marina and so forth, um, presumably they can have an education role with their customers about any change that we might put in place. Is that something that we could look at? I appreciate, you know, we, we don't want to I'm commit sure to about... costs, but if there's yeah. a parish council involved, but they may well feel Potentially, but I'm not them. aware of, it's not an area I know that well, and what the widths of the footpaths and verges are on yeah. there to yeah. incorporate so to take all that into account. Yeah. John. Councillor, um, thank you. The one possibility would be if there was any land available that we could park a camera van on, that might help. <laughs> okay. um, it, it's something, 
um, something that's worked with, uh, particularly with housing developments in, in North Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. uh, if, um, if the developer could be persuaded to put some hard standing in for a camera van when they put in their request for an extension to a speed limit, right. that um, well, sometimes pays dividends. I don't, I, I've done some of the safety audits on some of the works in Naburn over the last few years, and we've looked at this limit before, mm -hmm. um, but I can't, I don't know the road well enough to know if there's anywhere, but if it's something the parish had any influence over, mm -hmm. whether they had um, any means of persuading somebody to allow a camera to park on there, that might be something that would help. Well, certainly um, that is very much what I had in mind when I saw all these agenda items and you know, report. I do think we need to work more closely with the police and accept that you know, they have limited resources, but um, as we do when we introduce a res park or new parking restrictions, our enforcement officers you know, make a bit of a, a, an effort to um, get the message over. Um, and certainly we can't do that for all of these schemes, but if we can do that, you know, even with a couple of them, that, that would, would certainly, I think, help uh, convey the message that these uh, change, sign changes do mean that there should be a behaviour change from drivers once they, those changes take place. If I can just uh, indicate that uh, outside the marina, there's enough uh, verge width to uh, accommodate the size of vehicle that the safety camera team operate with okay. and we could perhaps arrange to put some well, some form of support down so they didn't sink. Well, certainly if, if the verge is wide enough and obviously clear of allowing sight lines for the exit and entrance but if it's which we presumably we would want to do in any case in terms of the location then there's no reason we couldn't have some sort of flower planter there when, when the van's not in place or at the end of the, Indeed. the bay, as it were. Um, yeah, that, that's something we could have a look at. So I think on the basis of these, I mean, the only other thing I would suggest is that um, depending on the length of that stretch to the existing limit, we might consider some repeater signs on you know, wooden post or whatever is that permissible in the regulations of 30 mile an hour just a reminder that that has changes happened it depends very much whether there's existing street lighting right so it would need to be street lighting for any reminder signs no the other way around yeah. if there's if there's carriageway lighting you can't have repeaters if there isn't you can i thought you can have them. you'd have them on the street lights then wouldn't you Presumably. no but you don't <laughs> Only if it's above 30. Oh, okay. Right. Well, we can look at that anyhow. Um, well, so I'm, I'm happy to approve the um, proposed extension of that 30 mile an hour limit. Um, and as I said, you know, look to work with the parish council um, to try and ensure that there's the changes combined with uh, a change in the nature of the Courage way and, and encourage compliance. So um, the next one on my list um, I have is the revival estate, which I'm quite familiar with, having worked at the college when it was on there before the houses were built. Um, is there anything particular to say about this one? Um, so the office of recommendation implementers advertised. This is another one where. We've got a new estate, which I think virtually generally the, the manual for streets, um, new estates are designed for a 20 mile an hour, 20 speed maximum, aren't they? In any case, the actual carriageway layout and so on. Um, yes, they are. Um, most, most of the uh, additional comments that have come through beyond the consultation period also have said that, you know, uh, have objected mainly from the point of view that they don't want the signage. <laughs> um, well, okay, but sometimes we have to live with a little bit and we can make it yeah. as inobtrusive as we possibly are allowed to. Um, well, but realistically, uh, the overall proposal 
is well suited to this area mm -hmm. and will emphasize those people that are unfamiliar um, that uh, that's what people should yeah. be doing. So in, in a way, this will just mean that it's consistent with any road off Tagasta Road. Mm -hmm. The rest of its length will have a 20 mile an hour sign um, when you turn off it. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to approve this. As you say, there would be two big signs, presumably at the entrance, but beyond that, there wouldn't really be much need for any additional signing. Mm. We would need some repeaters, uh, right. but they wouldn't but be. They'd be repeaters uh, anyhow, which is sort of yeah. not very big anyhow, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm happy to agree to that one. Um, we're on to Talthorpe now. Uh, this one's got a little picture of a 30 mile an hour sign, is that? Because there's no street it's... lighting there. <laughs> It's the uh, uh, design that is meant to be in sort of uh, uh, rural areas or where you've got um, wide open greens and such like rather than lampposts, because in this area there aren't any lampposts along right. the road, part of the road under consideration. Mm -hmm. um, it is an area that is heavily used by traffic, as you may be familiar. Um, and there are a modest amount of residential properties, but there are, and I've spoken to some of the residents when I was um, uh, posting the consultation letters, that there are quite a few children living in that area. Right. Um, not so much that they would be out onto the road because there's very little in the way of footpath provision, mm -hmm. um, but it's the area where they will to and fro to school at peak times, and uh, the road itself uh, can lend itself to a higher speed than 30, but as it's a residential area um, with, I think low farm is not a busy, busy farm as some are, um, that it does lend itself to a 30 miles an hour limit. Uh, I know there are some reservations about that, um, but I've spoken with residents who, uh, who've who made their comments mm -hmm. and uh, one of them called me a lovely project manager. I'm really <laughs> pleased. I want to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was after a dog nearly bit me, but never mind. <clears throat> um, and the emphasis is it's, it's a road that's traveling through an, an area that was um, mainly farm properties. Mm -hmm. is now mainly residential properties. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, John, do you want to comment on this? Um, yeah. Apologies for sounding like a, a broken record council, but it, um, it doesn't meet the DFT guidance and there's no speed data. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that the one of the um, one of the residents has commented that Traffickers that could be too, too dangerous to cross the road makes you know, me slightly concerned that speeds are higher than would be appropriate for a 30. Uh, I can fully understand why why a 30 would be desirable, but I would like to see some speed data. Is there some reason why we don't have speed data? We seem to have speed data for most of the others. Again, this was a historic... Um, uh, collection of information that came to me um, to uh, put forward as a proposed reduction in speed limit. Um, I'm not sure if Darren's aware if they're... No, we just never had any speed speed data done in this location due to the previous use. It was farmlands and it was not never seen a desire to collect that data for one reason or another. Um, but obviously the recommendation is experimental, which would give us the opportunity to then undertake speed surveys at um, certain times to check if we could get compliance and give us that information. Okay, and do we know, is this actually within a parished area, do you know? I mean, we haven't had any representation. It'd be within Strensel Parish. Strensel, so, I mean, if we do go ahead with this, I would... 
hope that the parish council and ward councillors could, you know, be advised of the um, survey and and, uh, and the conclusions of that. Obviously, if it's an experimental order, then the residents in the area will will know that it's on a trial basis. Um, but we're not committing to it being a permanent uh, change. Um, and ideally, I think we should have some before and after data as well. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I know these things take a bit, quite a bit of time before going through the, the legal process, but if we could get some speed data before any signs go up, then obviously that will help yeah, we, we can better, in, that. In, better inform the actual decision as to whether or not it's made a difference. Because, you know, obviously residents have their experience, but, you know, different perceptions of what speeds people are, are going at is, can be quite problematic depending on the environment and the, the vehicle, you know. You know I'm, I'm aware that, you know, larger lorries and things appear to be travelling a lot faster because they're more intimidating um, than they actually are. Okay, so um, as you've indicated an experimental traffic order for this, I'm happy to approve this, um, but with that caveat that we want to get some data before um, any changes are made to be able to draw conclusions from maps to whether or not it has, has made an impact on I don't uh, know, Councillor, sorry area. to interrupt. Um, would you want us to bring it back to you for approving? You're saying you're approving it, but subject to speed data, I just would like some clarification. Sorry, James. I was going to say, I think we'll get the speed data when we bring the report back about whether we make the experiment permanent or not. So when we make a decision about whether, I presume is what you're saying. Yes, then, yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, just so that we don't have the situation saying, well, we don't really know whether it's had an impact <laughs> when we come to the experimental. Uh, deciding on the experimental order, yeah. So but I'm, I'm happy for this to go ahead, but with that proviso that we get the data before we make changes to the signing. Okay. Very good, thank you for the clarification. Thank you. So then we move on to uh, A19 Shipton Road. Um, this one, <clears throat> as referred, has been subject to a lot of uh, representations and views. Some of these are in here. I'm also aware of at least two political parties that have been out and done surveys um, uh, and made made reports. One is mentioned in here, and one from the public speaker. So all of those uh, observations need to be taken into account when we make a, a decision on this. Peter, do you want to introduce this one? Indeed. Um, one of the first counties. Uh, Sorry. I keep forgetting. When I first came to the department last year, um, Darren gave me uh, the, this batch uh, to review. Uh, and on initial thoughts um, was that re realistically, the 40 mile an hour was the most appropriate speed limit for Shipton Road in the area under consideration. It's a wide open road, there's good visibility. Um, and in my own mind, I couldn't justify it. I have spoken with a number of residents, the ward councillors, uh, a disabled lady who lives in the Filingdales Avenue area, um, and to take account of the children crossing the road to go to and from schools. Um, it would make sense to have a 30 miles an hour limit, but I don't believe in my heart that it would be uh, adhered to. Um, there is a proposal that Christian Wood and his team are dealing with for a signalised pedestrian crossing at Filingdales Avenue and um, the road opposite. Oh. Yeah. Um, to help the uh, crossing, not just for school children and the, those with disabilities, but also for people for leisure activities so they can access the... Um, National Cycle Route, mm -hmm. etc. Um, in this case, what we could do in, as an alternative to reducing the limit, because 
uh, we can't afford the active travel plan engineering measures that will be needed to um, achieve compliance. But what we could do is provide a, a combined cycle walking route alongside the road uh, if there was the appetite to do so. I think, I think one option here is to, um, obviously there's the, the options that are laid out before you in the report. I think what Peter is saying is that you could review it as and when an active travel scheme comes forward. Mm -hmm. So, so, you, so what you're saying is it could be approved subject to further or, or deferred. What, I think what I was saying is one option for you, mm -hmm. which isn't in the report, but is to defer it until an active travel scheme comes forward, um, which then would change the environment to a point where you go, um, it's it's now appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, the recommendation in the report is we I think we do it as a um, an experimental. I think is the recommendation in the report. So it just gives you another option to think about. Um, just for my benefit, you mentioned about crossing at Filing Dales Avenue, roughly. Is that within the, the it is. limit of the proposed extension to the 30? It is. It's uh, where the, um, the new hospital facility is, and there's a care home in that area as well. And yeah. It's just underneath where it says existing 40. That one. Just yeah. around here. Oh. And do we, I mean, I'm asking officers here, do we have any indication of a likely time scale for that, for that crossing? If it uh, that would be around, I'm told, around 18 months. Before it is, a, is in, implemented, is that what? It, I think it would have to either be planned into the coming year's budget, if that's possible, mm -hmm. or the following years and done early in 2024. I think it's probably worth hearing from uh, okay. police colleagues. I think yeah. this is one where yeah. it's, it's a finely balanced one, I think. It's it fair is. To say. Mm -hmm. um, our, our feelings would be that a, a 30 limit would, or a 30 limit that worked, or vehicle speeds of 30 miles an hour would obviously be desirable, but probably couldn't be achieved at the moment without some sort of intervention, whether it be traffic calming. A, a signalised crossing would obviously help. Um, and it might be appropriate to start a, a reduced speed limit fairly close to the signalised crossing. Um, other options that uh, we've thought about would be reducing the carriageway width, possibly by adding a, um, a grade separated shared cycle and footway, uh, which would inevitably slow traffic down um, because it is very wide, very straight. The visibility is excellent. Um, so, Yes, if it worked, we would support it, but I don't think it would work. Um, That's obviously why it's a, an experiment proposed. Is just an experimental order does allow us to to consider engineering interventions. I think I think what we're hearing is that without those, the police's view is that it wouldn't work. I mean, I having been up and down there a, a few times, you know, looking at it with a from the perspective of the active travel um, proposals, I, I think, I, I thought that this um, change to the speed limit was something that would sit alongside those active travel measures, because as you say, it's a wide road. Um, there are pinch points which are not very attractive for cycling at the moment. I think the proposal, um, the active travel proposal would be to remove those and replace them with signalised crossings, which in themselves will um, create um, d d further slowing of the traffic um, and, and actually making that facility. Um, so I'm trying to work out the, the best way of, of phrasing this, but um, I would support uh, I can take officers' advice if I can if I can do this. I'm happy to support I think, it, the ETRO proposal to be timed alongside changes to the road environment. Now, whether that's from a crossing or from the active travel scheme or, or whatever it might be, but but obviously not making the 
the order until such time as we're closer. Because once the clock starts ticking, if you've got an 18, that's why I was asking about the timing, you've got an 18 month P window to, to understand whether or not it, there's going to be compliance. Um, we want to see some something happen physically that sends that message to drivers apart from uh, the signing uh, to make that that change in behaviour. Yeah. So I think I think the the tweak to the recommendation is that you're happy to approve on the basis that it's installed at the same time as the active travel scheme to look at that crossing across Fallingdale Avenue and North Home yes. Drive. Yes. So we'll make the change. Is that so that that yeah. would obviously then help to reinforce the message. Yeah. Um, what and, we'll do uh, is we'll just seek some clarity on the delivery dates for that, and we'll append that into the minutes so that the public yeah. understand the timescales we're talking to. So that because, because I, I, I want to avoid the situation, as you say, where you make the change in the speed limit, and then some the, the actual change in measures come some significant period afterwards, because then you've got behaviour established of, of excessive driving um, before you've got the, the reinforcement uh, of those uh, changes to the character of the road. So I'm happy to agree to it on that basis. Um, I think, is that all of the, have we concluded all the, the speed? It is councillors, my apologies. Is, right. Thank you and apologies for the length of time, but I think it's Thank important. You. With, with something like this to get it, it right and to, to understand you know, all you. the implications uh, and trying to get the right decisions um, for, for, for residents and, and for the city. Um, so I'll move on now to um, agenda item five, which is the parking on Riverside West Esplanade. Um, Darren, go to. Good morning. Uh, so this is a part to propose uh, no waiting restrictions along the West Esplanade. Uh, this request was brought forward for an representation of some users, residents and ward councillors from the Holgate Ward and uh, some representations from Micklegate Ward as well. Um, we've received two representations. One in the room today spoke about concerns for uh, the rowing club on that section and saying that the current restriction isn't enforced. Mm -hmm. The comment is correct, as, but the reason for that is that the lines don't go the full length that they should. The, the eight to six restriction should go all the way to the bridge. It's currently only lined up to where the old white gate is, which is uh, about 200 metres down the lane rather than the full length. So we can't enforce in the area that is currently seeing the issues. Um, mm -hmm. So the proposal spot forward to make the area no way at any time. Um, representations from the way around, say the access to the own club to make sure they could maintain and facilitate their events. Mm -hmm. um, it sh it shouldn't in invalidate their activities because loading and unloading would be permitted on the restrictions as it currently is between eight and six and the activities they currently do. Mm -hmm. And that was also a concern raised from the. Um, the other representation about their loading and activities on such, which it wouldn't impede their currently within an area of um, which is nowhere in any 25 anyway. So, so just, that's, that's just so to clarify the the position about loading and, and unloading, because the W lines in themselves still permit loading, loading activities. activities. Yeah. And um I'm just Want to understand how that would how would that apply to um, the activities of a rowing, rowing club? Because I can just from casual observation myself, you know, there may be quite a significant amount of time involved when the you know, taking boats off a trailer. Yeah. You know, is that you know is um, there a limit to how long loading the CEO, constitutes loading? The civil enforcement officer who is at the location at the time would witness the activities boat being taken off and constitute that as loading and loading mm -hmm. um okay. they generally ask for constant stream to and from the vehicle obviously mm -hmm. if the people in loading have boats in the hand then that would constitute and then the, the, the other question was about well there's a couple more questions it was about um 
events, um, you know, how would that be managed? Would there need to be a sort of a parking suspension for events to allow parking to take place if there is a sort of um, I need to review the event manual, but I don't think it would because the, ve the vehicles are pulling to unload the trailers and then they do close the car, <clears throat> the car park on event days for the parking right. of the main vehicles. So the car park is closed to the yeah. general public. So they can and they use have the use of the that. So. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, that, that, so that wouldn't be an issue. Um, there was also some reference to the, the old way gate. I can't remember whether it's... Uh, that was presumably was removed as part of the access, improved yeah, access to um, the general public along there, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a white gate along there that uh, restricts access and narrowed the path down to, I think we measured it about 1.7 metres. Mm -hmm. so, Which is obviously a bit of a challenge if yeah. you've got people on wheelchairs. Yeah, and as, as well as cyclists users. and other users going through. So the gate was removed, at, uh, I can't remember, a few years ago now, can't remember exactly. So there's a, there is a question there i know there's removable bollards to get through into the car park aren't there so it's whether you whether we actually need a second yeah so obviously that bollards, was uh, we could presumably look at that mm. if that was felt needed to mm. prevent vehicle access so for, yes yeah to prevent the activity further down okay um so i mean i appreciate that's not necessarily that's not part of the decision here but i think it, it perhaps would would help um, in terms of discouraging vehicle access mm. from, from that whole length. And then the last question was about the triangle of, it says in this representation, triangle of grass, but it's not grass any longer, it's a patch of mud. Yeah. Um, as I, under, I did ask in an email prior to this decision, um, whether or not the yellow lines would apply to to that they were um, but so um, the whole area along the path including the car park is owned by the council under the same right. um, management it's supposed to make the riverside path adopted highway as it's seen that it probably should be as right um, yeah well, that's usable a slight it's an anomaly seen as so there is proposals to bring that forward, but at the moment the council does have ownership of the whole area and, and we so do we have can approval. enforce yeah we've got approval to enforce yeah. the, the restrictions okay so um and lastly i think just one obviously there needs to be a conversation with the rowing club about the arrangements i think one of the concerns that was raised um was about cyclists going to and from there and and just if um it might be that you know in terms of the practical arrangements if uh, a highways officer could actually have a look with with them at you know their their needs and just what is going to maintain safety um because i think you know with with the length of the the area available for them to load and unload the boats that, that could actually help clear sight lines for people coming in and out of perky peacock which you know was the other issue which was raised as a representation just to make sure that you know all the users along there uh, yeah no, that mindful of that in their risk assessment i mean that representation was not about cyclists heading to the rowing club just along no, the riverside the cycle yeah, track, so, yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, but they did say that the rowing club activities do actually help slow down cyclists. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but yeah, we can definitely have Just discussions have, about have that conversation. Yeah, to, to I, I believe the rowing club as part of their event management will have liaisons with the council safety advisor group about okay. how they manage that area. But we can definitely yeah. open up those discussions. So we can s sort of reassure people that we are looking at those aspects. Um, um, but on the, the basis of what you've said, I'm, I'm happy to approve the recommendation. I do think, although, you know, the experts amongst us know the difference between a single yellow line and double yellow line, and a lot of general public do understand the double yellow line and may well not appreciate a single line, yellow line, particularly since it's very liable to disappear on the 
flood waters and uh, mud that needs to be cleared off mm. the esplanades. I think from that perspective, it probably makes it'll make enforcement easier to have have a W line. Having had the reassurance what you uh, that you said that um, boat trailers could be left there without being ticketed, provided they're not attached to a vehicle if they need to be left overnight. Is that that was what you said, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So, you know, on, on that basis, I'm happy to approve the proposal um, and to commit to, you know, reviewing the, uh, the triangle of land. I mean, if, uh, if we want to do some sort of landscaping there, if it's not actually needed for parking, then, then that, that could be, again, receded. maybe the ward councillors might be keen on that proposal. Um, but we can look at that. So I'm happy to, as I said, happy to approve the recommendations as you've got for this paper. Uh, which brings me to urgent business. Um, there was one item of urgent business having uh, had the representations, I felt it probably appropriate to deal with under urgent business, the uh, representation regarding uh, weight uh, limit um, on the B1228 um, uh, between Elvington and Sutton on Derwent. Um, this does concern me, having heard the public speakers and the uh, issues that have been raised there in terms of the impact of the traffic, but also the threat to the uh, listed bridge. Uh, and to the utilities that are carried over it. Um, and it does seem to me it's not on my agenda today, so I'd have to ask officers to um, make a, a formal decision, but I would um, be very much in support of the motion of a, an experimental traffic regulation order to bring in a weight limit um, so that you know, the damage to the utilities can be limited in the short term and allow our structural engineers or whoever um, to, to make further investigations as to uh, what, what, what the position is with the bridge and whether that weight limit can be justified on structural grounds. Can I request we adjourn for two minutes, just to have a quick discussion as officers ourselves first? Certainly, I'm happy to do that, yeah. Can we go offline for a couple of minutes? Um, 
Yeah. All right. uh, welcome back. Um, as I was just talking about the um, matter of urgent business in relation to representations we received about the damage to a bridge on the B1228. I think what the, because of where the boundary with the East Riding is and the uh, ownership of the bridge, and I, Darren, can you, is the bridge? Uh, the bridge is in the East Riding's maintenance. Um, so what I think we need to do is go away and have a, a conversation with East Riding and bring a report or at very least understand where they stand on this. My understanding is they've previously had an experimental traffic regulation order that they uh, abandoned and didn't implement. Um, so I think what we need to do uh, on the back of your, considering this is an urgent item, mm -hmm. is for officers to talk to uh, colleagues in the East Riding as a matter of urgency, and then we'll uh, update you and bring a, uh, a, a paper back once we've had those conversations. Uh, okay, and obviously in liaison with the parish councils on, on, you know, that are directly affected, just so that um, you know, we can have a, a concerted a, approach. I think we probably also may need to consult with Yorkshire Water just to understand um, what their concerns are about the damage to their infrastructure. Yeah, as I say, the, 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 there are a lot of conversations to happen before we go. We're going to do something straight away because I think we yeah. just need to make sure we don't create yeah. knock-on impacts, unintended consequences. Yeah, obviously, I, I wasn't aware from the representations that the bridge was at not our responsibility. So apologies for, for not including that. Okay. So on, on that point, then, I will uh, conclude the meeting. Thank you for your attendance.